Great to have you with us. Mansfield today on a Friday, and that means we take a look at property. I was uh, reading an article the other day by uh, an old friend uh, in the form of Dr. Andrew Golding from uh, Pam Golding Properties about first time home buyers, which caught my attention and uh, thought we'd zoom Andrew in and have a chat about this because there has been a change in this particular market in the property market itself. So, Dr. Andrew Golding, welcome to Mansfield today. Nice to have you with us. Nice to see you still as young and, and, and healthy as ever. Um, this, Thanks, this, Jeremy. Good to be with you. This, this change, Andrew, when, when did you guys start being alerted to it? So, um, I, I think um, during the lockdown, the first lockdown, uh, there was a lot of trepidation about what the market was going to be like uh, when we eventually came out of lockdown. I think that the general consensus was that there might be some pent up demand, but that the market would effectively mirror the, the economy and um, the negativity in the economy at that stage. And I think to everyone's surprise, uh, the market came out um, very strongly post lockdown, August, September last year. And one of the most significant factors was off the back of basically historically low interest rates, almost 50 year low interest rates. Um, the market appeared to be, be fueled by first time home buyers. And in particular, a number of people who suddenly found themselves able to afford to get into the property market and get on the property ladder, where up until then they had probably only considered themselves to be renters. Uh, and that momentum uh, then continued through the balance of uh, the end of the calendar year and, in fact, into this year and has been, without a doubt, one of the major catalysts that we've seen um, in the market and fueling the increased uh, number of sales in, in the market generally. Andrew, let's take a look at this first-time home buyer. Typically, wh what are we looking at here from from an age point of view, from, from, a, from a, maybe an income point of view? And, and w yeah. what, what segment of the market are they buying into? Yeah, so, so generally speaking, uh, a younger age, I think, um, you know, anybody who is um, in the, with, a, with a household income of around, uh, say, 20 to 30,000 rand a month is now suddenly able to afford a mortgage of around 10,000 rand a month. Um, and uh, a mortgage of 10,000 rand a month is getting you a starter home in the, in the sort of first time home buying, the common first time home buying category, which is anything from 800,000 rand to one and a half million rand. Um, and that's where we've seen um, the most um, uh, vigorous activity in the market pretty much across the whole country. So any suburb um, where that uh, kind of property is being offered as a, as a property segment has been extremely active. It's very much been a, a market where provided the property is correctly priced, uh, it's taking a very short time for those properties to be transacted, uh, generally as short as in a week. Um, and as a consequence of that, there's, a, there's been a lot of activity pretty much across the board. We are starting to see that market slowly but surely slow down, but it's been almost a year now that we've seen really heightened activity and that's had a knock-on effect on the whole market uh, across the board. You say that, and I'm just thinking to myself, um, if I look back to those pre-lockdown days, ah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> but but if, I, if I look back to those pre-lockdown days, Andrew, and I think about the amount of... Um, Units that were being built at that stage, which would have suited, they were in that sort of, and what triggered this thought was the, the amount you were talking about. They were within that sort of 800 to 1.2 million range. Um, and there were a huge amount of developments going on in, in Johannesburg um, in, in that particular bandwidth. So people were obviously looking at that as either a, a build to rent or possibly build to sell and hoping that the build to sell option would come through, which it seems to have done. Yeah, so, so I think um, what we've seen with uh, this 
call it post lockdown market, uh, is that a number of, of sort of structural changes that have taken place uh, in the market. And, and obviously that includes the work from home environment, the fact that, uh, you know, the commuting distances are not necessarily so important anymore. It's really made some very significant uh, changes in the market. But the, the biggest one has been that pre COVID, uh, you know, with interest rates 30% higher than they are now, um, many people just felt they couldn't afford to get in even at that lower end of the market. And what's changed is with effectively a 30% reduction in interest rates, uh, people have looked at their finances and said, hold on a second, we can actually get in here. We can certainly um, get into the, the beginning of the market. I think what's, um, what's also a factor is that the buy-to-let market and the investor market per se uh, is, is certainly under pressure. We haven't seen huge numbers of people so far getting in on that investor market. So predominantly what we've seen is the first time home buyer market who are looking to occupy those homes is who's, who's taking up the slack and who's driving the market. And I think that's a positive thing uh, for the market generally. We are slowly but surely starting to see the investors now come back, albeit that rental yields are still significantly under pressure. We're not seeing any kind of increase in rental yields. In fact, if anything, rental yields continue to be below where they were pre-COVID. So, um, you know, those dynamics are playing themselves out. Um, nothing in property is ever absolutely constant. But for the time being anyway, it certainly seems like some of the structural changes that have taken place in the market are here to stay. And one of them appears to be that we are in a low interest rate band for the foreseeable future. And I think that is what is to certainly catalyzing and driving uh, the first time home, bu home buyer market significantly still. Andrew, I, I take it then that if this change has come about, that the banks are playing into this market as well and, and are prepared to lend to what is essentially uh, a new customer in this particular sector. Yeah, very much so. I think what's, what's gone hand in hand with this momentum that we've seen in the market is the way the banks... Um, have been prepared to come to the party, both in respect of potential um, homeowners who are in some kind of financial distress and where they've rolled that debt over or deferred it, but also and most particularly in the, to the extent that there's an appetite uh, from the banks to lend and to grow their mortgage books. And that's certainly been a factor of the market since September last year and continues to be so. Do you, quick look into, um into the future do you see the same sort of thing happening when we when we eventually come out of this third wave that this will be a, a new sort of development as it were no I, I don't think so i think that the the conditions that are that were, are around pre the third wave are going to continue um for as long as we're in this low interest rate cycle and it seems like that's going to continue for the foreseeable future i think we're going to have the same market conditions. What we are seeing uh, is developers uh, beginning to come out of the woodwork and recognize that there is a, an exciting market within South Africa for first-time home buyers and uh, developers are continually looking to cater for that in the right price band. So between that uh, 800,000 to one and a half million, sometimes even up to two million, there is definitely still capacity and an opportunity for developers in the major metros of South Africa, all the major metros of South Africa, actually. Andrew, I'm going to, I'm going to throw a Scud missile in here because um, we, we said to you, we just, we just wanted to talk about the first time uh, homeowners market and how it's changed. Um, but on Wednesday this week, we spoke to um, Andrew Stark from Flight Center. Uh, I beg your pardon, yesterday. I'm, I'm losing my mind here. I lost it when I was when when we were both at school in Grahamstown. Um, <laughs> um, uh, we spoke to Andrew Stark um, and uh, about the opening up of Mauritius. Uh, let's just very briefly, because we are running out of time, let's just very briefly take a look at that, that upper end of the market, that end of the market who has possibly not traveled nearly as much as they would with their family. They haven't gone on their annual skiing holiday to Austria. They haven't gone to the Seychelles for a week 
they haven't gone over to the States to go and visit family there or Canada. Um, and they, they are cash flush at this stage. Yeah. Are you finding, because I know you've got a fair amount of developments in, in Mauritius, are you finding that there is a keen interest in that upper end of the market now, people who are wanting that offshore investment and, and maybe a bit of a different lifestyle? Yeah, so we've seen a number of interesting trends at the top end of the market. Uh, and again, we think these are structural. In other words, they are sort of semi-permanent, for, certainly for the time being. So the first one is the emergence of the so-called Zoom towns, which are uh, where places like Nizen and Plett and Hermanus have enjoyed a migration of people to them because, they, because effectively you can work and live from anywhere now. So that's been the first one. The second one has been uh, rather surprisingly that foreigners have taken a similar view on South Africa, notwithstanding the fact that they can't get into the country, they have purchased, um, in some cases, sight unseen, because again, they can live and work from anywhere and they are choosing to potentially live and work from South Africa. And then lastly, from a South African perspective, we have seen a continued appetite of high net worth South Africans looking to diversify their property portfolios. And whether that's to Mauritius or to Portugal or some other foreign jurisdiction, there's no question that there is more disposable income around as a consequence of not spending it on various things like holidays and so um, notwithstanding the fact that Mauritius has been closed up until the 1st of July, uh, there has been an appetite, an, an increased appetite across all of those jurisdictions to investigate uh, whether it's alternative residency programs, citizenship, or just diversification in terms of foreign investment. So um, those markets are all extremely active. Andrew, thank you very much for your time. We do appreciate it. And nice to talk to you again and uh, nice to see you again. You too, Jeremy. Anytime. Thank Thanks. you. Andrew Golding, Dr. Andrew Golding, the CEO of Pam Golding Properties right here on Mansfield today. And that wraps up the property section for today. Tomorrow, I'll be back in the same seat and being abused by Samantha Cowan. I'm used to it. Done it for years and years and years. Look at these eyes. Until then, cheers, guys.